Greetings. Back in 2014, I created a script to set the focal distance of a camera in Daz Studio in a precise manner. It worked by creating a null, selecting that null, making sure that the, what, the camera you want is selected in the view, and then execute the script. I have the script uh, added to my toolbar to make it easy to use. And that's all well and good. The reason it uses a null is because, for example, here you see the centroid point of the eyeball of the Genesis figure is the middle of the eyeball. And if you're doing narrow depth of field close up, that's, you know, probably a good centimeter or so of back focus. And in the past, you could adjust this by you parent it to the eyeball and then you would sort of try to figure out um, whereabouts it needs to be. And it looks like in this case that, you know, eight is pretty close. You can see where the null is, right? But if you've got a shape where you want to make the eyes be really accurate, and this also then would account for morphs that end up changing the shape of the eyes and so forth. Um, one of the ways you can facilitate this now is with the rigid follow nodes that Daz added a while back. Uh, and I did a separate video on using them to create attachment points for um, jewelry and whatnot. Um, but it actually works well for setting a critical focus point as well. And I'm using the eyeballs here as an example, but the same thing would apply to anything. So if you had, you know, a weapon and you wanted to make sure the null was in precisely the right point, you could do a similar trick with that. Anything that is a um, tri-mesh or tri-axis uh, weight map figure uh, this will work for. Um, you could, theoretically can do it for the older parameterized meshes as well, but I find sometimes Daz bugs out a little bit with that. But, you know, use it. You're, you're free to try it. And I've got an example here. I've got two examples. I've got a G8 uh, Genesis 8 female and a Genesis 3 female. I've loaded both of them. I've turned off everything but the eyes. And we can see the structure of the eyes here. So right now we're looking at a Genesis 8 female. And if I select it and we look at the surfaces, I've made each of the surfaces a different color. So the orange is the eye moisture, the red is the cornea, and then green and blue for the pupils and iris. And so if I turn off the eye moisture, um, you can then see that on Genesis 8, the eyeball is still a enclosed structure, probably because they wanted to make it more friendly for 3D printing, but you can see, if we zoom in a little, you've got green for the pupil, blue for the iris, gray is the sclera, and then red is the cornea. And if I turn off the cornea, you can see that the pupil is sunken a little bit, and then you've got the iris, and we look at it from the side, and you can see the ghost of the cornea and if I turn the cornea back on you can see it's out here and if we look at um, Genesis 3 it's quite similar so if I select this as you can see the eye moisture is a little bit different on the Genesis 8 the eye moisture did not cover the cornea on um, Genesis 3 it does also in Genesis 3 eye moisture is the tear, whereas on Genesis 8, that's a separate figure. So if I turn the eye moisture off, you can see that on here, there's no back to the sclera. 
but we have the same sort of basic structure of, um, I'll clear the selection, the cornea, and then behind the cornea is the iris and the pupil. And again, they're sort of sunk in, although in this case, they're very flat, whereas on the Genesis 8, they were a little bit um, more, you know, they had more shape to them. Now I have gone ahead and on the left eye, I've already set this up and then we'll do a quick creation of it on the right eye because it's only going to take a couple minutes. But in terms of critical focus on the eye, to me, the area you want is the front of the cornea, um, which you could, if you choose, you know, you might instead say, hey, you know, I want, um, oops, just select the right figure. Uh, you know, that instead you want the pupil, you could easily as well do the pupil, and, but we're going to use the cornea here. And what I've done is created a rigid follow node, which you can see, whoop, um, all of this, by the way, is in the geometry editor in DAS. Um, so here you can see the bone that I've created from the rigid fall node, which I called left eye cornea, GADF, and then I made, because my script needs a null, I've created a null, which I then parented to that bone. So let's do the same thing for the right eye and show you how quick and easy that is to do. So first I'm going to select the right eye. That's where our... Um, rigid fall node bone is going to get created. Now the way I selected is I picked the four, I'm in uh, the uh, wire shaded view here to so we can see all the individual polygons but also get the color from the shaders. The way rigid fall nodes work is, is you select some number of faces from a figure and you do a create geometry assignment, create rigid follow node from selected. And again, since I have the right eye selected, it's going to parent it to the new bone to that. I'm going to click that and I'm going to say uh, right eye cornea G8F accept. And so now we have that bone. And what the rigid follow node does is it creates a bone that uses the centroid of the faces that were selected as the center of the bone or as the location of the bone. And so what that means is that if I come over here and I'm on the right eye parameters and I say look side to side, you can see that it moves with it because it's making it the center of those four polygons. And because those four polygons happen to be fairly flat in this figure, when we look at it from the side, you can see that they basically line up with the very tip of the surface of the eyeball, or the cornea specifically, right? And then in order, if I, Sorry, spam phone calls. They've been on the increase a lot lately. Um, if I come and I try to do set focus, your distance, PC is unhappy. It complains because that bone is not a null, so that's easy enough to fix. We're going to say create new null, and we have right actually GF. Uh, Right. So we've got a new null. I have parent items in place turned off. And so when I drag that to the right eye, it becomes there. And so if I turn off the marker for the bone, I can turn this on and off. You can see that it works. Um, and now I can say set focal distance and it did the right thing.
And so that's how easy it is to ensure that the place you want to be critical focus is always, you don't have to move this because it centered on the, the null. And if I go back to the right eye, I can move this around and you can see that it is following it if I go up and down. And so you can get really precise, exact focus for a very close up, narrow focus shot, and you will have the eyes perfect focus. And like I say, you can use this same trick for um, any figure. So like I could create primitive um, and we will make um, cone, except and that cone is down here. And so let's say um, we want to use, I probably should have made it have more segments. So I'll do the bottom as an example. But so if I say selection is marquee and I go like this, I just selected all of the faces on the bottom. And actually, let's do this not with a cone. Let's do it with a cube. Be a better example. Cube. Um, and we will say 10 divisions. So here we have a cube. And I want the, well, let's say I wanted the upper corner to be I could even with this the one face do geometry assignment create rigid follow for example and as you can see because it did a centering on that it got the center point of that cube or that face as the um, location of the thing um, if I Here we are in the center of the cube. Create, we should follow. And now we have a point that's exactly in the center of that face or that side of the cube. And you could now create a null and then easily attach it. And no matter what you do with the cube, so if we rotate, you can see that Daz is keeping that in exactly the right place. And so you could do critical focus on the cube. So I hope this tip was uh, helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.